Today on CPTV, we'll tell you what's happening next with the recently passed student success fee. We'll show you how slow residents are dealing with the rising gas prices. And we have a live interview with a local high school student who raised thousands of dollars for poor children in Bangladesh. Live from Studio 300 on Cal Poly's campus, I'm Travis Ketchatorian. And I'm Lauren Bennett. You're watching CPTV. Cal Poly students voted on whether or not to recommend the student success fee on Wednesday. The fee passed by a vote of 57% to 43%. CPTV's Ed Zucchelli has the reaction of Cal Poly officials and students along with what's next for the student success fee. After month-long student outreach by ASI and other Cal Poly organizations, Cal Poly students passed the student success fee. Um, I figured that we're in such a huge like deficit right now that this could really help minimize the deficit. 41% of the student body voted in the election, higher than the record-setting ASI elections last year, which had a 37% turnout. Now that the fee is passed, everyone is looking at Cal Poly President Jeffrey Armstrong as he decides whether or not he will go along with the student recommendation. The next um, step is that the president, he's off campus currently, so once he gets back onto campus, he'll look at all the information, all the data, and he'll next steps will be to decide whether or not he moves it forward for approval. Even if the fee is sent to the chancellor, there's no guarantee it will be approved. In 2009, the Cal Poly student body voted to pass college-based fees. However, the fee was rejected by CSU Chancellor Charles Reed. The administration waits to see if Reed will approve the fee this time around. Personally, I'm not happy that it passed because um, it's still unclear as to where those funds are going to go. Cal Poly officials say they have no idea what the chancellor will do. As everyone waits for President Armstrong to send the student success fee to the CSU Chancellor, students, faculty, and staff on campus are preparing for potential fee increase this fall. On top of the $160 increase in the student success fee, students will see a tuition increase of just under $500 next school year. Cal Poly officials are currently beginning the capital campaign to increase the financial aid for Poly students to offset the rising costs of higher education. CPTV, Ed Zucchelli. Although no one knows for sure when President Armstrong will make his final decision, Associate Vice Provost Kimi Aikida says a decision will be made in the next few weeks. Rows of homeless campers line Prado Road right now. The campers are a problem for nearby businesses who say they are trespassing. CPTV's Morgan Chappelle shows us what police are doing to solve the problem. In recent weeks, police have been enforcing a city ordinance that doesn't allow people to camp on the streets. Homeless people in San Luis Obispo who live in campers are being forced to move elsewhere. Police are responding to complaints from business owners and people who live and work in areas that have become popular campsites for the homeless. People have actually been using their electricity, there have been defecation and urination on their property. Um, they've had an assault at one of the locations there. Some local business owners have tried to prevent problems by taking matters into their own hands. Um, we've had to add some fencing and security to uh, keep them from walking through our property on their way to the creek. Some people camped out on Prado aren't happy with the way police are handling the situation. The city cops harass us all the time. They bitch and gripe about, you know, why don't you guys move here, move there? No, we can't. So, you know, they don't help us. Walker said there's few places for the homeless to go. Prado Road isn't the only street where illegal camping occurs. Police are giving tickets to homeless parked behind the Tribune, Food for Less, and other locations for violating the city ordinance that bans them from parking in the same place for more than 72 hours. We're, we're not trying to single them out. Um, I know wherever they move, the problem will move itself. I just wish they would just let us sleep wherever we can. We're not hurting anybody. Nobody at all. A long-term solution is underway as Cap Slow and the city are working on a safe parking program. They hope to launch the program in the next few months. For CPTV, Morgan Chappelle. Cap Slow says the safe parking program will be open to all homeless people in San Luis Obispo. The city council and Cap Slow will start their program in late March. The San Luis Obispo Chamber of Commerce is making efforts to bring policy leaders closer to the community. The first annual State of the State event last Friday brought a panelist of experts to answer questions from a room of community members. The five visitors included Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom and California Senator Sam Blakesley. They spoke on the issues facing small business in this economy. 
You've got to be willing to adapt to the new realities. And you have to wake up every single day as small businessmen and women and ask yourself this question, what world am I living in? Cal Poly helped sponsor the event. Lieutenant Governor Newsom said the state's budget cuts is putting universities like Cal Poly in jeopardy. Slow residents have been paying more at the pumps the last couple weeks. Reporter Olivia Bickle has more on the spike in gas prices. Here in San Luis Obispo, gas prices have been increasing over the past few weeks. With the record high, residents are having to pay more out of pocket to go about their daily lives. The current average for regular unleaded gas in San Luis Obispo County is $4.40 per gallon. As of yesterday, San Luis Obispo has the second highest gas prices in California, coming just a few cents behind Santa Barbara County. The gas price increases have caused drivers to rethink their methods of transportation and the way they budget their money. I have actually started taking the bus more when I can, when the weather's nice, um, and buying food more from the grocery store rather than eating out. Just one month ago, gas was less than $4 a gallon, and California has seen a dramatic increase in gas prices in the past two weeks alone. Diesel users are also affected by this price increase. Yeah, I just spent about $85. And I have a diesel pickup, and diesel is the most expensive fuel there is. When I bought the truck, it was the cheapest fuel. Now it's the most expensive fuel. Although experts predict the prices will continue to increase, slow residents are still hopeful that they will drop. <laughs> I'd like to see them come down just like everybody else. With the rate gas prices have been rising at, residents hope it doesn't reach the $5 mark anytime soon. CPTV, Olivia Bickle. Today, the average gas price in California is $4.34. Chi Omega held their fourth annual philanthropy, Chi Casino, this past weekend. The sorority raised $23,000 for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. They raised the money by asking donations from family and friends and collecting fees at the door. Attendees enjoyed a variety of games and prizes that were set up. I'm about some of the baskets in the middle. You know, they got some hygiene supplies. I'm all about that. I'm all about that. Looking fresh, looking good. Gift baskets were put together by the sorority members and raffled off at the end of the night. The sorority broke up the record for the largest amount of money collected by philanthropy on campus. ASI's wellness program started this week with a seminar at the new rec center. The topic discussed was called Fueling Your Workout what to eat, when to eat, how much to eat. Students were given the opportunity to create their own personal eating plans for pre- and post-workout. Students also learned about how healthy food options on campus and the ideal grocery list. To create your own personal diet plan, visit www.choosemyplate.gov. The Global Networking Conference is inviting students to attend an international business meet and greet this Saturday. Previously known as the International Career Conference, the conference hopes to advise students through workshops and speakers. Networking opportunities will follow later in the afternoon. Keynote speakers include Jeff Boschler, a current senior mortgage loan officer and other business professionals. Tickets will be available in front of Chumash Auditorium. Doors open at 9.15 a.m. For more information, go to www.calpolygnc.org. Coming up next on CPTV, find out why hundreds of people were lined up in the UU on Wednesday. See what the Cal Poly Acapella Group has been doing around campus. And we'll show you where to eat dinner a few feet above the ocean. Um, I voted against the student success fee because I saw um, no accountability in where the um, said money was going to go. I voted for the student success fee because I think that Cal Poly needs more classes and everything is just so impacted. Welcome back to CPTV. Almost a thousand of Slow County residents and Cal Poly students lined up outside Chumash Auditorium on Tuesday night. The Cal Poly Re College Republicans invited lawyer and author Ann Coulter to speak to the community. Coulter's latest work, titled Demonic, How the Liberal Mob is an Endangering America. Coulter is known for being highly controversial with extreme conservative opinions. We're conservatives. We need to stay to establish our religion. The government can't. <laughs> stay can't. Coulter is the author of seven New York Times bestsellers. 
She is also a frequent guest on shows like Good Morning in America, Hannity, The O'Reilly Factor, The Glenn Beck Show, and Real Time with Bill Maurer. You can follow Anne on her Twitter and see where she will be appearing next. Take It Slow has been busy singing to students everywhere on campus and performing at events. I went to find out a little more about the a cappella group. Behind these doors are a group of talented college students that have an ear for music. The a cappella group Take It Slow is an independent student-ran group that gets funded through events such as the Valentine's Day Grams. The group performs at community events like weddings and philanthropical events such as Up Till Dawn that took place last Saturday for cancer. The group is consisted of eight males that includes tenors, basses, and one beatboxer. And six females who are altos and sopranos. extremely passionate singers that have some form of training, no major, no majors in music, and we get together twice a week to sing about seven hours, perform music that we write for shows that we decide across San Luis Obispo. I think it's just like a like a group of my friends, you know? Like that's what it that's what it becomes when you get in the group is like your second family. So it makes everything that much more fun. Take it slow will have their spring musical on May 20th and make sure to keep updated on their Facebook page for upcoming details. CPTV, Lauren Bennett. Take it slow spring concert will take place at either the Frog and Peach or at Slow Brewing Company. The Kappa Alpha Theta Sorority is holding their annual cupcakes for CASA tonight. The sorority will be selling cupcakes, brownies, and other baked goods to raise money for CASA. CASA is a local organization that advocates for the interests of abused and neglected children in Slow County. The event will be held outside the Theta Sorority House on California Boulevard from 8 p.m. to midnight. A group of students are building an innovative car to compete with the newest industry models. The Cal Poly Motor Car Association is renovating a classic Porsche with an environmentally friendly technology. CPTV's Hope Hanselman got a look under the hood. Our motto for it is, take it out to dinner on Saturday night, and then Sunday you can hit the racetrack with it. This 1977 baby blue Porsche 911 was once a racer's dream. And now it's a passion for a group of more than 40 Cal Poly students. They're combining classic luxury with modern sustainability for what they call the race car of tomorrow. We have essentially a blank canvas right here and we're, we're able to put our own creative touches on it, which has just been, it's been really, really great. The Cal Poly Motor Club is converting the Porsche into an electric vehicle. We're, we're doing our best to at our Cal Poly, you know, learn by doing, learn by driving ingenuity to it. And local businesses are jumping on board to sponsor these enthusiastic students. As soon as we got them all together and our members saw it, they said, slam dunk, let's go. Donating their equipment, time, and experience, these community members are the biggest fans of the student-run project. They say European companies are already trying to develop battery-operated luxury cars and that these students are ahead of the game. There's eyes watching it big time because that's going to be the future. That's all there is to it. Hope Hanselman, CPTV. The students say the car will be done in time to compete at Laguna Seca Raceway in 2013. It is that time in our broadcast to follow Curtis Cole on his search to find the best foods across the Central Coast. Let's see what's cooking in this week's Culinary Corner. A historic seafood destination boasts fresh catch and ocean views, including tables that yield views of the ocean below. Time to turn up the heat in this week's Culinary Corner. What once started out as a dream, the Old Port Inn now sits nestled inside the Crescent Cove of Port San Luis on a pier built 134 years ago. 
This weathered wharf is home to a kitchen that cooks the day's catch without ever leaving the water. Uh, we got panoramic views of the ocean here. And we're very fortunate to be out over the ocean and we got glass see-through tables. And great cooks. I stepped into the kitchen to see a dish that has customers coming back for more. The warm Greek salad. Rock cod is seared in olive oil and a dash of Cajun spice adds color and bite. Next, a vibrant flambe of sherry wine provides an acidic reduction. Diced tomatoes, kalamata olives, feta cheese, and a julienne variety of carrots creates a complementary balance of textures and tang. This dish is plated on a bed of spinach and topped with parsley and feta. After 41 years in business, the old Port Inn has mastered the art of seafood. CBTV, Curtis Cole. In case you can't make the trip out to the old Port Inn, the owner has also a restaurant in downtown Slough called Chipino. Tune in next week for another edition for the Culinary Corner. Coming up next on CPTV, the rain is gone and Lindsay McLeod has your surf report. And see how Cal Poly cornerback Asa Jackson performed at the NFL Combine. And we have highlights from last night's basketball game against UC Davis. Um, I voted against the student success fee because I was mostly unsure of where the money would be going and also because I'm an out-of-state student so I didn't want to pay more fees on top of the enormous amount that I feel like I already pay. Welcome back to CPTV. Weather reporter Lindsay McLeod has the forecast. Should we be expecting any more rainy weather, Lindsay? Thanks, Travis and Lauren. It doesn't look like we're going to be having any more rain this week. Right behind me, you can see a live shot of Bello on the 101 in Pismo. It's looking pretty nice right now, but that's quite a change from earlier this week where we had some rain. Uh, the beaches are going to stay sunny until Monday all along the coast. It won't be too hot, though, mostly the mid-60s and low-70s in Pismo and Avila. And Moro is going to be around the same, but down to 59 on, on Tuesday. So the surf report for today, in Pismo we have some 5 to 7 foot waves. They're saying it's poor to fair conditions for surfing. Avila is at zero to one foot waves, so definitely not really the place to go. But if you do want to check out a great place, there's six to nine foot waves in Moro, and it's fair conditions, so that's the place to go. Let's move on to our St. Louis Obispo weather headlines. As you can see, it's obviously sunny out today. It's going to continue to be sunny through the week until around Monday. Um, high 60s and 70s for most of the week. Clouds appearing on Monday and Tuesday. That's about it. Um, let's move on to our five-day forecast. All right, you can see... Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we got a really great weekend coming up. It's going to be 70s, lows in the 40s, but that's not till later on at night. And it's definitely going to be clear out, so definitely enjoy the sunny weather. Go outside, go for a hike. It might not be the best beach weather, but it's great to be outside. Um, we're going to be seeing some clouds on Monday and Tuesday, but definitely enjoy the sun this weekend. Back to you guys. Thanks. Thanks, Lindsay. Looks like a good barbecue weather. Yeah, and maybe some hiking trails also. Indeed. <laughs> This is the last week for Cal Poly's men's basketball team until they head out to the Big West Tournament. Sean Parti has how the Mustangs did last night against UC Davis. The men's basketball team has only one game left after beating UC Davis last night inside my gym. Let's go to the highlights. The Mustangs beat the Aggies last night 69-56. Right here, senior Mari Furman shakes off Tyler Less and takes a pull-up jumper for an easy two. He led the team with four assists. Jamal Johnson misses layup in traffic, but David Hansen is there for the putback and one. Hansen led the team with 16 points on the night. Sophomore Chris Everly takes it to the rack for a tough two and had 13 points off the bench. Here, Amari Furman finds a driving David Hansen for an easy finger roll. Mustangs had great ball movement all night, and David Hansen had a great pass to Will Donahue for an easy layup. The Mustangs had 13 assists on the night. Cal Poly finishes the regular season on Saturday night against Pacific at 7 p.m. inside Mott Gym. The game will be televised on KSBY. The game is also senior night and will honor the six seniors on this year's squad. In football news, Cal Poly cornerback Asa Jackson impressed the NFL scouts this past week in Indianapolis at the NFL Combine. Jackson performed in the top 10 in his position in the bench press, 20-yard shuttle, and 40-yard dash. Many sites have been selected in the top 100 picks, and NFL.com says that Jackson has shown the ability to cover NFL talent, and he should be one of the first corners taken in this year's draft. 
In other Cal Poly sports, after a 7-1 start to the season, the Cal Poly baseball team, who was just ranked number 22 by a college baseball newspaper, lost 4-3 to San Diego State in the first game of a four-game tournament in the Aztec Invitational. The Mustangs cannot hold on to a 3-1 lead, but they look to bounce back tomorrow against the University of San Diego at 11 a.m. The Mustangs, who are 7-2, face the Terreras, who are 6-3 after losing their first game of the tournament 4-3 to Cal State Northridge. For CBTV, Sean Parsi. Thanks, Sean. Hopefully the Mustangs can continue their great start this weekend in San Diego. Coming up on CPTV, the Slow Comedy Festival is taking over San Luis Obispo. Cal Poly students listen to some funk music in the UU. And a high school student shares his education with a third world country. We've got a live interview after the break. Uh, I voted for the student success fee because I believe that our education is something that's fairly important. We do need to pay attention and pay money to get an education. Uh, the way that the system is going, they have a major deficit for the state education budget. It's not enough to actually keep our school running the way that we want it to. CPTV, it's time to talk entertainment. CPTV reporter Ali Wenty has this week's Hollywood Minute. Um, this week in Hollywood, we have a slow festival. The comedy came to Cal Poly this week. Weren't you there? I was there, and it was quite funny. A slow downtown brew, and it was a good time. So how long? Do you know how long the slow comedy festival goes for? And here is Ali Wente with the entertainment report. Their own jazz band. Forty comedians from around the world have come together for the five-day event. The festival features comedians like Allison Weber, a parody musician, Jimmy Dore, who has his own Comedy Central special, and Mark Fry, assistant director of the festival. We all come together as a team, like the A-Team or whatever, Justice League of Comedians, to give you the best comedy festival around. The festival kicked off on Wednesday with the Let Us In Already show at Slow Brew. Show locations for the rest of the weekend include Cielo Cantina, Motab, and Marston's. If you're old, if you're young, if you like to laugh, you should definitely come to the Slow Comedy Festival. The Best of the Fest show will wrap up the festival on Sunday at The Graduate. For more information, visit slowcomedyfestival.com. The Jazz Band is a group of students made up of different ages, majors, and instruments. The band plays a variety of music from swing to hip-hop. Well, the overall sound is that we've got a bunch of different sounds. Uh, for today, for this crowd, we decided to play an all-funk set. If you would like to be a member of the jazz band, you can contact them through the music department for an audition. If you would like to hear more of the Cal Poly Jazz Band, their last concert is this Saturday at 8 p.m. in the pack. And that wraps up your Hollywood Minute. Tune in next week for all your entertainment updates. Thanks, Allie. Sounds like the Slow Comedy Festival will be fun to check out. We end our broadcast today with a visit from a special guest. Akash Salam came to the United States with his parents when he was eight, leaving behind his family living in poverty in Karamja, Bangladesh. Now he's a junior at a Royal Grande High School, excelling in his classes, but he hasn't forgotten where he came from. Akash returned to Karamja in January. He brought with him $5,000, and he raised it all by himself. He used the money to donate school supplies to children in the village, even granting scholarships to a few of them. Akash is joining us in the studio today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So you visited your home at the village at the beginning of the year. And so what were the living conditions like there? Oh, it was very poor. Um, everyone have to live in poverty. You know, they, are, they don't have the things that we have. No t cell phones, just, you know, basic needs. So I know $5,000 is a lot here, but I would imagine it does a lot more in uh, Bangladesh. How, yeah, how would absolutely. that translate? Um, you know, I, I got a lot of stuff, you know, water pumps, sanitary toilets, school materials. You know, $5,000 might not seem like a lot here, but in there, you know, I could do a lot of things with it. Now, Kosh, you are not done giving back. Um, your next goal is to raise $20,000 to build a new school. And so tell us about those plans. 
Yeah, so the school that they have currently is an hour away and, you know, rain f falls through the roofs and it, it's the worst educational experience a child can have. So, you know, building a school near will be essential to providing the children a better education. So, you know, I'm, I'm reaching out to a lot of people, you know, you guys here and, you know, as many people as I can giving out speeches and stuff to raise that kind of money so that those kids will have a proper education much like, you know, Cal Poly does, much like we do in our Arroyo Grande High School. All right, so you've definitely done your part, but how could the greater community get involved with, like, a project like this? So, you know, they can visit knowledgegift.org, which is my website, and, you know, right now I'm trying to set up a, a nonprofit with Interact Club and Rotary Club, so, you know, if people would like to donate, that would be terrific. And, you know, people can learn more about it visiting my website or facebook.com slash knowledgegift. Well, thank you very much for coming to the studio and talking to us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're doing a great thing. Thank you. Best of luck to you. All right, well, uh, that wraps it up for today. Thanks for tuning in to CPTV. You could catch us every Friday on Charter Channel 19 and Campus Channel 2. You can also find our broadcasts on the Mustang Daily website. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful weekend, Cal Poly.